Dear Diary, welcome to Belfast and Linfield. Obviously, this city and club is a fair bit bigger than Banbridge, being the favourites for the Prem and fully professional, but first things first, we get a chance to evaluate the squad during UEFA Conference League qualifying. Fair say it's an exciting time, and while I haven't had a chance to put my stamp on the team just yet, we'll see how the 4-4-2 wing play goes against this outfit from Azerbaijan. I'm hopeful for a strong start, especially in the first league at home, but who knows what to expect. The away trip should be something as well. Great team bonding. Until next time. and welcome to episode 20 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM and coming up today it is the first episode with Linfield and we start things off with our first episode in Europe in this save it is the first qualifying round of the Conference League taking on Sumkait from Azerbaijan potentially over both legs depending on how things do go in the first one from Windsor Park so if we are looking forward to this first episode from Linfield we will also have a quick look at what the squad does look like then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel or are new here since we have joined Linfield and like the look of what you see then also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but obviously this is our first episode in charge at Linfield off the back of what did happen in yesterday's episode when we did make the jump from Banbridge Town, if you missed how that did happen, I'll leave a link to that episode over in the top right corner, but fair to say, it is a significant step up from the team that was expected to finish bottom of the Premiership to the one which is the favourite for this upcoming season, and hopefully we can do something as well in Conference League qualifying, and maybe, just maybe, sneak our way into the league group stage thing that goes on these days in UEFA for the Conference League here. In 2024, but before we do get into that, as mentioned in the intro, we haven't really had a chance to have much of an effect on the squad just yet. It's only been a few days since we did get appointed to the job here at Linfield. So it does mean that all the players here are the ones who were already here. That's not too much of a bad thing, though, because, of course, this was a team who were already favourites for the Premiership this season. But in saying that, we have got some potential transfers in the works. So if we go over and have a look, at our reserve team, the Linfield Swifts, there you can see all of the players who we do have in on trial. So definitely have some players here who I am keeping an eye out on and who we might potentially sign going into the start of the Premiership League season. So that's definitely something that I have been doing. But for now, we have made no signings just yet. It was too tight between when we did get appointed and this first game in Conference League qualifying. But something else in terms of signings, we do need to consider, seeing as we are in Europe, we need to consider the homegrown players and homegrown nation players. If we are going to bring someone in, who are they going to replace? And will that muck up the balance on that? And those limits also, of course, do apply to premiership registration this season. Only 20 players over the age of 21 can be registered, so we can't have too many over that age. And also, we need eight players there who are homegrown in club and at nation as well, so things get a little bit more tricky at this level in terms of squad registration, but still, we should be able to improve the squad a little bit going into the start of the league season. But as mentioned, we are going to roll out what is pretty close to what we did use at Banbridge Town, our 4 4 2 wing play for the first game of this Conference League qualifying campaign. And it is time to run you guys through the squad that we have inherited here at Linfield. In goal, starting for us is going to be Chris Johns. He is a good, solid Northern Irish goalkeeper with four star current ability and potential 29 years old is wanted by Inverness in Scotland, but hopefully we can keep hold of him right back as an area. I am definitely looking at improving, but for now the best option I think we have is Matty Lund, who can also cover the midfield as well, but he does look like he has better attributes than our other option at right back, and that player I believe is Connor Pepper might be his name. The last name is definitely Pepper, but 33 years old, three-star current ability and potential. I think that is an area we might be able to improve on, hopefully, with one of those trialists 
who is at the club if we go down a little bit further, and it is indeed Connor Pepper, who will be the backup to him, more of a natural right back, but just not quite as good a tribute wise, but also is on a little bit in terms of years at 30 as well, but two and a half star current ability and potential, not quite as good looking as Matty Lums, that is why he is starting at right back. Our centre pack partnership pretty much picked itself. Jimmy Culliger, he was the key player when we did get to the club here at Linfield. Only his two and a half star current ability and potential at 33 years old. So again, this is an area we could potentially improve on, but he does look like a good solid centre back at just under 1.9 metres tall. And to start things off, he is going to be partnered by Niall Logue. He is a fellow Northern Irish centre back, a little bit younger at 28 years old, and also in terms of the star rating, a little bit better there with that free star current ability and potential as well. So that is our centre back partnership. And to round things off at the back at left back, for this upcoming game, it is going to be Keelan Reid. He has two and a half star current ability and five star potential at 19 years old. But as you can see, not really that good of a player at the moment. Definitely has the potential, but needs to work on some stuff like his crossing and dribbling for that wing back role that we do use. The reason that he is playing in this first leg is because our usual left back starter in Niall Quinn. He is suspended, but definitely usually would be one of the better players on the team sheet here at Linfield, 30 years old, with his three and a half star current ability and potential, but that probably highlights the fact that we might also need to try and find a backup left back a little bit better there. Then Keelan Reid, then we make our way into the midfield. Out at right mid, it is going to be Stephen Fallon with three and a half star current ability and potential at 27 years old, another Northern Irishman who does look quite decent. We go out to the other side and Joel Cooper, one of the better players here at the club with four star current ability and potential, but yet again, is in the prime of his career at 28 years old. And then in the central of midfield, Chris Shields, who can also play as a center back. So because of that, we are going to play him as the ball winning midfielder, quite a well-rounded player. So he should do a good job for us there in that position. But yet again, is getting on a little bit in terms of age at 33 years old, but partnering him, one of the younger players in the starting lineup here at Linfield, Kimmy Palmer, 24 years old, four star current ability, four and a half star potential. He will go into that box to box midfield role and going up to our front two, the deep lying forward is going to be Jordan Stewart. He is a player who can also play left wing, but we're going to start him as that deep lying forward because he can do a job up there for us. Three star current ability and potential again, that could be another area that we could try and improve potentially in the future, albeit if we go onto the bench, you will see we have some quite highly promising strikers down there as well. But for now, Jordan Stewart can play as the deep lying forward and up front as the advanced forward is going to be Robbie McDade, the 27 year old, also out of Northern Ireland, three and a half star current ability and potential. So it's a pretty solid looking first 11 here at Linfield, as we did see when we did take the job on in yesterday's episode and going down to the bench, our backup goalkeeper is going to be David Walsh. We have a number of backup striker options here at the moment. Among those, Ethan Devine, albeit with only three star potential. He's a player we might look to get rid of. Also down there, players who can play striker. Chris McKee, he's a player with four star potential. So maybe should be getting the game time over someone like Jordan Stewart. But for now, in terms of attributes, is a little bit better than McKee. We go down a little bit further. James Comby is another player who can slot in up front as well and as being an attacking left winger. But again, two-star current ability, three-star potential. Not too sure if he really has the ability to cut it here in the first team. At Linfield going down a bit further, we have Stankovicius. He is a player who is in from Lithuania. Actually has quite high potential, but we're probably going to drop him at some point down to the under-19s to make sure he can get a bit more game time, but certainly a striker with a lot of potential. And of course, if we go down a little bit further, the player that we did have in on loan at Banbridge Town last season and the player of the year, the player who was five-star rated at Banbridge Town, one of the reasons that we did go to Linfield, as you can see, this squad is much stronger than Banbridge Town based on that alone. And that player is Jay McDowell. It's probably going to be our backup advance for this season. Two and a half-star current ability. Four-star potential, we know all about him from last season, where he was our player of the season. Also on the bench, Kirk Miller is the backup to Fallon at right wing, but he is listed 
at £40,000. Being 32 years old, also down there, we have Kyle McLean. He is going to be the backup to Chris Shields in that ball-winning midfield role. The other backup midfielder down here is Curtis Dolan, but he is going to be the backup for Kimi Palmer in that box-to-box -box midfield role. That's probably another position I would want a slightly better backup in is in the midfield, so something we need to keep an eye out on in that free transfer market. And also down here, just looking for players we haven't covered off yet. Connor Scannell can play on both wings as well as in the midfield. So it could actually be a better box-to-box -box backup than the player that we did just look at there. In Curtis Dolan, and he also has a little bit of potential as well with three and a half stars of that. So it could be a player we give some game time to off of the bench. We highlighted Connor Pepper earlier and also down there, Joshua Archer. He is a youngster who, to be fair, probably won't get a lot of game time with the players who are in front of him. In that midfield role and also currently out recovering from an injury is Newbury, who is a centre-back come right back with two and a half star current ability, three star potential. He might be another player that we do look at letting go of, seeing as he does only have that three star potential. And that is our first team squad here at Linfield before we do change things off the back of when we do eventually get knocked out of Europe. But it's going to be interesting to see how this campaign does go. And we kick it off with a tie against a team out of Azerbaijan called Sumkait. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Apologies if I am not, but to be fair, not too familiar with any teams from Azerbaijan. But as you can see, they have two-star reputation, so exactly the same as we have at Linfield, albeit their facilities, not quite as good as ours. So hopefully we can get off to a good start here and make our way through to the next round of Conference League qualifying. Not sure if we're going to show you guys all of Conference League qualifying this season, but these are our first games in charge, so I thought it would be a good place to start here at our second club of the save. It is interesting to see that Linfield over the past few seasons have just struggled a little bit in the early stages of European qualifying. Going back to last season, they got beaten by a team called Gijlani, not by too much, but they did not get past that first qualifying round. So if we win this one, we're already doing better than what happened last season. The previous season, they started off in Champions League qualifying because they did win the league the season before, but unfortunately lost in the first round of that and also lost to Sutjeska Niksic when they did drop down into Conference League qualifying as well. And further back, we can't see because those are real life fixtures. That is all that has happened so far in the save. So hopefully we can pick up the first European tie win for Linfield in this save in this first league coming up against the outfit from Azerbaijan. And we'll come back shortly and manage our first game at Windsor Park and at Linfield and also experience the Conference League atmosphere as we take on Sumkait in the first league. And just getting through this pre-match interview because of course in the UEFA competitions this year, we get the music and here it comes. It's pretty much the same as the Europa League anthem, isn't it? The Conference League once the UEFA have not shelled out too much there, but there are the lovely graphics for the first time this season, or should I say, in the save, and it is Sumkait lining up exactly the same as we are with a 4-4-2. Hopefully, we can get through this one and go to Azerbaijan with a good lead going into that second league. And it's taken 15 minutes for us to have the first highlight of this game. For some reason, no crowd, so I might need to adjust my graphical settings off the back of this one, because there definitely should be, but early stages, we have definitely been the better team in this game, so it does look like the wing play might be working against opposition of this caliber, so that does bode well for the domestic games here in Northern Ireland, but early doors it is Sumkait here on the attack in the red. They put a ball there into the mixer, and that player there scores his 24th goal of the season. I'm absolutely not going to try and attempt to butcher his name, but defensively wise, that was a bit of a butchering that we did on ourselves there. No one picked him up. Inside of the box is a nice ball there in the mixer. He gets in behind far too easily. Johns probably should be keeping that one out. But despite the fact we have been well on top early in this game, as you can see, we go 1-0 down. And we've just entered the last 10 minutes of this first half and we get our second highlight of this game. We are still pretty dominant here in terms of stats, but certainly not as much as we were early in this game before the opposition did score their goal, but there's a nice ball over the top for McDade. Once we did get possession back, we'll find Palmer here inside of the box. Now, first goal scorer here at Linfield is going to be the young midfielder in Kimi Palmer. That is a top finish. He busts out the robot, which I think we can all appreciate. And we draw level here 
at Windsor Park. Nice ball over the top there to McDade and squares this one inside the box. Palmer runs onto it nicely, finds the bottom right corner from that angle, and we make it one all here not too long before half time in the first league. We'll encourage the boys, and right off the back of that, there is another highlight. Hopefully, we don't concede a goal here right off the back of taking the lead, and thankfully, we do deal with that ball that they tried to play over the top, and McDade here plays that one over to Fallon on our right-hand side, starts to make his way inside the box. We'll square that one for Jordan Stewart, and all of a sudden, we have kicked into gear here at Linfield, and in the short space of only a few minutes, we go from 1-0 down to being 2-1 up, and based on the stats from this first half, I think that is fair enough. Good work there from Fallon, makes his way inside the box, puts that ball to Stewart, Nice finish there, sweeping that home into that bottom left corner. And just like that, we have a 2-1 lead. Not too long before halftime. And now it is a corner which finds the head of Jimmy Cullica. And he puts that in the back of the net. An absolute onslaught here. Just before halftime to make it 3-1 in the first leg of this first qualifying round for the conference league. That is an absolutely toilet camera angle there from the director. He should be sacked. But anyway... We don't mind because we have grabbed a 3-1 lead here right before halftime. Certainly turn that around on the scoreboard late in that first half. But based on the stats, I think we deserve that, albeit actually ended up being a lot more even than I was suspecting. But we are up 3-1 at halftime in this first league. If we can keep this up, we might not actually need to bother too much with showing you guys the second league if we build this lead up a little bit more. But early doors looks like a great start here at Limfield. We will get the second half underway with a 3-1 lead. And 10 minutes into the second half with our first highlight of it. And the opposition do give the ball back to us here. Reed is on it. Plays that one back to Log. And he plays it up to Chris Shields. Plays the ball over the top for McDay. Just inside the box. What can he do? We'll square this for Stewart. It's a little bit messy. But he finds the back of the net. It's a really ugly goal, that one. But we will take it. And it's starting to look like this could be a bit of a pumping for our opposition from Azerbaijan, despite the fact that they did score the first goal in this game. Stewart there gets a bit of a deflection off of the defender's clearance and is able to put that one away, as I said. Very ugly goal, but we make it 4-1, 10 minutes into the second half. And shortly off the back of that fourth goal, we're going to make our first few substitutions in this one. A few players have gone down to Red Hearts, our centre-back and our right-back. So Connor Pepper can get some game time off of the bench here in place of Maddie London as well as that we need to find a centre back to come on for the goal scorer in Jimmy Cullica. And with us actually having no centre backs on the bench at the moment, I think the best option here might actually be Kyle McLean. And what we can do is shift Chris Shields back to centre back and just mix things up like that for the remainder of this game up 4-1 just past the hour mark. And only a few minutes off the back of those previous substitutions. Time for another one now. Cooper at left wing is down to a red heart, obviously. Lots of striking options on the bench, and Jordan Stewart on a hat-trick can switch out to the left-hand side. What we might do here is bring on Chris McKee for him. Jordan Stewart can go out to the left wing for the last 20 minutes of this one, still 4-1 up. And just inside the last 15 minutes of this one, it is McLean here with a free kick. Puts that far post there for Loga, but he heads that one just over the bar. One more goal here, and that might just about do it in this game. But now we have a lot of players down to red heart, so I think we are going to use our last two substitutions. We'll give the guy from Banbridge Town last year some game time here, seeing as Robbie McDade is down to a red heart. So Jay McDowell will get his first taste of European football this season. Hopefully not the last. And also, I think the best option we have on the bench for the other replacement is right wing, because Fallon is down to a red heart. Kirk Miller can come on for him. That's all of our subs used. And still 4-1 up with 10 minutes left in this first league. And with five minutes left in this one, we do have a free kick, which I believe it is going to be Miller who does line up. Indeed, it is the case. We'll try and put this top right corner. Forces a good save out of the goalkeeper. But then there is a bit of a soft penalty in amongst that. And Jordan Stewart gets a chance here for his hat trick. He sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And that will surely seal the result here. 5-1 at Windsor Park. And surely that should also be enough for us going into that second leg in Azerbaijan as we do enter the last four minutes of this one. So it looks like it is going to be a great start to life here at Linfield. You would hope so anyway, with a four-goal lead. And that is what we are going to take into Azerbaijan for that second leg 
taking on some clay. We got off to a little bit of a rough start, despite the fact we were well on top of them in terms of stats. But thankfully, a real blitz there before half time, and we were pretty solid in the second half, winning that 2 0, and we beat them overall by a scoreline of 5 1. In the first league, considering how that went, I think we should be safe in the second league, even if they do pull off a result at home. So with that in mind, we'll go forward a little bit, show you guys the highlights from that second league, and just make sure we do go through into the second qualifying round for this season's conference league. And here are the highlights from the second league in Azerbaijan. The home team here are in the purple. And as you can see, yet again, they got off to a good start. Lovely chip there from that guy who I believe also scored the goal in that first league to put them 1-0 up. That did make it 5-2 on aggregate. But thankfully, we got another goal not too long off the back of that. Niall Quinn back in the team at left back, playing his first competitive game of the season. Rockets that one into that top right corner. But from there, yet again, their striker here has far too much pace for our defence. Also, the goalkeeper there, not too great from a tight angle. And they did grab a 2-1 lead on the day. Then about five minutes into the second half, they made it 3-1 on the day. And things got a little bit interesting, it's fair to say, with 40 minutes left. But thankfully, we were able to shut things down. And we only suffer a 3-1 defeat, which is not a great result off the back of what happened back at home. But it does mean we are still going through to the next round with a 6-4 win on aggregate. So certainly a little bit concerning what happened there in that second leg, but we are still going through to the second qualifying round of the Conference League. As you can see there, our opposition are going to be Pias Glewis, who are a team, if we go and have a look, who are out of Poland, a little bit higher reputation than both us and that team that we did just take on and being from Poland. They're probably a little bit stronger. That could be an interesting matchup if we do come back for that one in tomorrow's episode. Also, something which might have affected us in between those two conference league qualifiers. A couple of friendlies were scheduled, which I was unable to cancel. So I'm not too sure if that's affected the overall squad in terms of their fitness. But yeah, that was definitely not ideal. We've liked to have a full week training going into that second leg, but it wasn't the case. But thankfully, we got the job done in that first league by five goals to one and go through to the second qualifying round off the back of a 6-4 aggregate win. But I think that will do it for the first episode here at Linfield in FMOE. For the first time in the save universe, they get through a qualifying round in UEFA competitions. That is a very nice monkey to get off the back nice and early. In terms of when we are going to come back, I am not too sure. It probably depends if that second qualifying round game in the conference league is interesting. Otherwise, we might go forward a little bit more when I've had a chance to change the squad up a little bit in terms of some free transfers and come back at some stage during that first month of the league season because I am well aware we probably don't want to spend too long going through conference league qualifiers because I don't think we're that likely to get through to the league slash group stage when you consider what did happen in that second leg there over in Azerbaijan and also the fact that in terms of what the club do expect from us, they just want us to be competitive. So it does sound like they're not expecting us to do too much there in the UEFA Conference League this season. But if we start to do something interesting, we might come back for that. But honestly, it probably depends on how much I do get through in between now and when I need to record the episode, which will come out tomorrow when you guys are watching it. But if you enjoyed that first game in charge here at Linfield, making our way through to the second qualifying round, of the conference league then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you're enjoying the series here on the channel and haven't done so already also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well and until tomorrow or something here at Limfield thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers